In this video, I'm gonna go over liquid lead coolant. This is the newest coolant available for the ICF in the update, giving it a 400% efficiency and allowing us to use the most powerful pellet for the ICF, which is sodium chloride. Now, it also takes the biggest possible laser in order to activate, and we need 22 heat exchangers in order to cool it down. So it's a big setup, but it should be a good one. And uh, yeah, timestamps are in the description. Without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's start by taking a look at the properties of liquid lead. So it has a thermal capacity of 800 thermal units per 1 millibucket. Now in the PWR, it has reduced efficiency because it absorbs neutrons. But in the ICF, it's going to give an efficiency of 400%. Now, if we take a look at how it's made, then you just need the industrial liquefaction machine, lead ingot or powder, both work. Now, hot liquid lead, it has reduced thermal capacity, but 100% coolable. So, yeah, this is what we are going to use to cool down our ICF. Now, for the pellet, we have many different types, uh, but this is just a refresher here. So, the most powerful one is the sodium chlorine. As you can see, all of these have different heat requirements, but the highest one is the sodium chlorine. So you can make these automatically using the ICF pellet maker. Automating this is pretty easy. You just need hoppers on every side. And it will also take muon because uh, these are muon catalyzed. And sodium and chlorine combined will give us 16 pellets. So each muon uh, capsule will give 16 operations in total. Now let's start with the ICF reactor. This is a big chunky 17 long reactor right here. And it will need lasers on both the sides because uh, yeah, only with two lasers can we produce enough heat in there to sustain a reaction. So let's start making the laser. Leave out a one block gap from the reactor and place down the laser controller because this is where the output of the laser is going to come from. Behind it, we place a laser cell surrounded by four uh, laser flash tubes. And then we place down eight capacitors in total. There in a star formation, we have placed down eight capacitors and then we placed down eight turbochargers. Now, turbochargers are only as efficient as the amount of capacitors that you have. So placing down more turbochargers won't really give you anything. So this is the layout that we are going to go with. And we need total 26 of these. So I'm going to cover these with the laser casing. And then using world edit, I'm going to stack this 25 times more. So we have total 26 long. So I'm going to stack this right here and in survival you are going to make it block by block. So there we go. This is the 26 long uh, laser setup that we have. Now these are 208 uh, I think capacitors. Yeah, 208. Now we need five more. So how do we place this? So come to the back side here and we place down one more flash tube surrounded by four capacitors and four turbochargers because each flash tube needs to touch a cell. And finally, one more capacitor along with turbocharger and that's it. We are done. 213 turbochargers and 213 capacitors in each single laser unit. I'm going to cover this all up using the casing and place down a port in order to power it. And right clicking the controller will make the laser and it will show you the amount of power that it's going to produce. The heat it's going to produce. Sorry. Now we are going to do a similar setup on the other side. So the layout is going to be exactly the same. We are going to mirror it and have 213 capacitors and 213 turbochargers on this side as well. The important part here is the last five uh, capacitors that you are going to place on the back side. So once both of these are made, both of these combined will just give us enough power, a little bit more than what's needed to activate the sodium chlorine uh, pellets. Set the coolant type to liquid lead because that's what we are going to use here. And now as we are going to empty out the entire buffer of the ICF when this is running, we will need total 22 heat exchangers in order to recycle all of the, not recycle, cycle back all of the coolant that we are using. So setting up all of the heat exchangers. Now one good thing right now is the heat exchangers by default are set to 24,000 millibuckets per tick, which is pretty good. Also remember that you can use the setting tool in order to copy the setting of a single heat exchanger and paste it to all of the other heat exchangers instead of doing them manually. Now in the middle, I'm gonna have a pipeline for liquid lead. And going from the other side, the outside of these heat exchangers will be a pipe for hot liquid. 
in this way we can circulate both of the liquids here so i'm gonna extend the liquid lead pipe first going back to the icf and connect it using fluid ducts like this so that's one connection done set it up to liquid lead and now we are gonna set up on the outside a pipeline for hot liquid lead so you can do this in any way you like this is the layout which i generally like to use when i'm making such builds so that's why i mark out chunks and then set up the machines in there so in case you are in survival chunk loading makes things easier so now we connect both of the sides for hot liquid lead and finally extend this pipeline back to the icf reactor in order to close the cycle of liquid lead and hot liquid lead so there we have the pipe set to hot liquid lead and we are done with that so that's both of the pipes set for the coolant now we place boilers on top of these 22 heat exchangers and these boilers will have steam pipes set up on the top look how cool the array looks by the way so yeah steam pipes coming from the top as we are gonna use them to power a single leviathan steam turbine and we connect these pipes on the back side and then set the pipes to steam so that's that and now we connect this going into a single leviathan steam turbine the limiting factor here was uh, the powered condenser because first when i tested this build i tested it uh, using the creative uh, thing the creative uh, flywheel so yeah i didn't test it with boilers so the limiting part here was the single condenser that i used but that can be rectified easily you can just use two condensers which should be enough so here's the high powered condenser having both of the connections for low pressure steam and water i'm just gonna place down a gauge here to see the amount of water that we are circulating and set this entire line to water here and that's it that's the entire boiler array set now we just need to power our lasers so i'm gonna set up a cable connecting both of these and have a storage box on the top supplying it with an infinite battery here but you can loop this back finally we fill up the icf with liquid lead because yeah it needs coolant and once this is done we are ready to start the icf so without any pellet first uh, let's see if it's circulating properly so we have the appropriate amount of heat per tape that we need and liquid lead and hot liquid lead is being circulated continuously so that means that the pipes that we set they are not broken anywhere they are working properly and now it's time to place down the pellet here so with the pellet in there first things first it's gonna empty out the entire buffer of liquid lead and look how fast it depletes like it's crazy fast this video is not speeded up by the way this is the normal depletion rate now we have maxed out the condenser and the power that we are producing is not as much as we are consuming but that's because the condenser is the bottleneck here so this can be solved by adding another one and uh, yeah it's gonna take some time before the liquid lead buffer fills back up even though the icf is off now it's gonna take some time the year we go so now that the buffer is back here we can turn off the icf and uh, yeah place down a second condenser and now when we power this uh, the water loop should produce enough in order to give us more than we are consuming and this is with the 85 percent efficiency as i said when i tested this with the creative flywheel it gave me 6.9 giga g per second which is a cool number so yeah that's the liquid lead coolant efficiently doing its job and we have already depleted the pellets because they are like the entire process is way too fast now when you process these in a centrifuge you will get the materials back you need in order to produce muon so the ionized particles can be used to make copper ion capsules combined with hydrogen they will give an antiproton positron pair you can combine this with hydrogen again to in order to obtain muon so yeah that was the entire process this is how you can make the max size laser if you go any higher then it shows the max size uh, exceeded 
So yeah, I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, peace out. Stay safe.